Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, another exciting episode on The Hobbyist. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I did tease a little while ago. I did a little video where I did show a box uh, and asked everyone, you know, what's, in, what's inside the box. Um, it looks like my standard box that I used to build some of my batteries in. This is not a battery. Um, I did not get any uh, comments as to what was possibly in the box. So here comes the reveal time. What is in the box? So here is the box. So what is the box? Okay, if you start looking here, by the way, this is very incomplete. I am still in the testing phase. Uh, I did actually just use this thing um, just uh, like a week ago on a camping trip. It is a heater, guys. It is a heater using a pretty standard, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with, a Chinese diesel heater. Uh, you can see uh, inside here, right? You can see down here, I have the heater uh, inside here. So that's what this is. So I do have, you can see right here, this is just the bag of, um, you know, uh, ducting and pipes that I have. So this will go into my tent. You know, there's uh, you know, one on one side, one on the other, bring the air in and bring it out. This does, you know, if you are aware of these uh, diesel heaters, um, it is a heat exchanger. So as long as I keep, you know, this portion of it outside the tent, uh, which you can see on the back side here, is where I have my exhaust intake and uh, outtake ports uh, for the air intake and for the exhaust uh, down there. Uh, so, you know, this portion of it, of course, is outside the tent, whereas the pipes go in. Now, this, like I said, is a work in progress. Uh, I've been using this and testing this uh, for quite a while now, I'm just trying to iron out all the kinks. I've rebuilt it in this box several times, uh, which is why there's holes that have been, you know, covered up and like, just, you know, it's just not the best at build quality at this point. The main issue that I have is with how I attach the pipes. I just basically duct tape. Uh, I have a sleeve that goes on that got pulled out on my last camping trip uh, and I uh, duct tape it all in. It's a horrible way of doing it. <laughs> um, if I can get a 3D printer though, Right, you gotta help me out on that, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, watch these videos, uh, so that way I can get a 3D printer. Once I do, I will uh, be completely rebuilding this uh, from scratch, basically, as far as the you know the box goes. But I will incorporate. Um, I've seen a few systems that I'd like to do using uh, magnets um, to basically pop on um, the docking right there. So, which would make this thing amazing. Um, but just to kind of. Take a quick look at the inside. Basically, everything is inside the box. You can see right now, this is where I, I store when it's not in use. Um, here's the air intake, the filter. Here is the uh, exhaust, if I can get it out of here. So here's the exhaust. I just kind of bend it open a little bit more, put it on the back, and uh, vent that uh, up. And then you can see inside... Right, so I've all the, I did completely redo the wiring harness. If you mess with these, you know wiring harnesses are just I think they're just ridiculous. Um, so I did map out all the circuits and completely just redid all the wires. I just kept the uh, the plug, the sort of this plug that it's got here, and just kept that going for it. Um, but everything else got rebuilt. So you can see, shorten up the wires, things like that. Um, I have my fuel tank in here with um, you know some heat um, resistant um, uh, separator. Um, the big thing to this that I feel makes mine different than most of the ones that you'll see, um, and you might be wondering, is this box on top here. The thing about these is there's one portion of it that really, really, really sucks, and that is the fuel filter. And the reason for that is it uses just, it's just a basic um, rod, like a ramrod kind of thing, where there's just a, a cylinder and a metal rod that just goes in repeatedly like that and that's what pushes the fuel through but this is basically a metal pin that's in a metal shaft so every time you, you get this ping 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 uh and it's you know happening many times a minute right so maybe if this is you know in your rv and it's you know externally mounted um the, the reality is you can watch a ton of youtube videos on all the things that people have done to try to dampen the sound i have tried to do some of those myself i came up i don't have it here but i came up with a pretty awesome um its own box soundproofed with i mean i tried to do all the all the tricks that i possibly could uh and, and while it did help um it definitely did not get rid of the sound i could still hear it um, they also do make, um, and some of you guys may have tried, um, a 
quieter, quieter um, fuel pump. It is not quieter. It is not quieter. You can watch a bunch of YouTube videos on it. It is not quieter. The only thing that's different is the pitch of the sound is different. And and I will agree that the pitch, um, it, it's not quite as annoying, um, but it's still, it's just as loud. And it, frankly, it's just as annoying. So I can't do that with a tent situation where this is literally right outside my tent. There's like nothing between us. I'm going to hear it. It's going to drive me crazy. It's going to drive everyone else crazy. That's a no. Some dude in uh, England, if you guys are uh, curious, I can pop the information below. There is, um, I did tons of digging. I finally ran across a YouTube video where someone had designed and made their own electronic solenoid pump. So it uses an electronic solenoid. It is silent. You can't hear the pump. Uh, it is great. Um, this pump is it's great too. It's uh, adjustable, so I can adjust the rate, uh, especially if I'm changing uh, altitudes. Um, that comes in handy. Uh, but in general, this thing is super quiet. You can mount it however you want. It does not matter. Um, and you just have to tap it into the 12 volt system that's already you know that you already have in, uh, and you're good to go. So it was very very easy to incorporate. The only problem is um, it's it's expensive. Uh, this was by far more expensive, the single most expensive thing in here. And in fact, if you take everything in this build except this and add it up this is still way more expensive um that that's the bummer uh, on that so i may be looking at uh, maybe trying to design and uh, build out my own um i i think having this is what makes this right you can easily build this stuff into a box you know but if you have that regular pump you're not going to want to have this you know especially as like a tent type heater um you know right outside your tent um yeah, it's just, it's not great, unfortunately. Um, but pretty, pretty straightforward build. I just took all the stuff that came in the kit and just, you know, built it in a box and just try to be mindful of like not melting the box, right? So, you know, I do have a, you know, I come from more of a regular sort of tent heater um, in that I have a, a Mr. Buddy propane heater, which is, it's fine. It works great. It is tent safe. I know there have been reported issues and there definitely is the potential for issue. Um, I'm, you know, I try to be as careful as I can as far as where it's uh, placed in my tent, you know, as far as like falling and burning, things like that. Um, and then, of course, making sure the tent is vented. I have multiple uh, carbon monoxide sensors in there um, because, you know, that's one of the big things. With propane, that's going to be your biggest thing when you're burning a flame inside is, are you going to burn the tent down? Are you going to use up on the oxygen and start producing carbon monoxide? Um, and then the other thing with just propane that generally just kind of sucks is it does... Um, create a lot of condensation, right? So you tend to wake up a lot of condensation just all over your tent. So depending on kind of where you're camping and what the situation is, that might be um, bad. Um, so that's something to consider too. Using the heat exchanger method, none of that, right? This thing sits outside. It's only, it's taking air from the inside of the tent and just heating it back up and putting it back in. Uh, so it actually does uh, help to reduce the humidity slightly uh, in the tent versus increasing it. There's no open flame in the tent. It is just hot air. So there's no chance of flame or anything like that in the tent. The biggest thing is just making sure that you set this thing up uh, where the exhaust isn't going to you know, fall over or fall on something that's going to cause a fire, right? So as long as you keep the area clear, it's fine. This thing works great. I love it. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so I can keep making this type of content. Like I said, I do want to get to getting a 3D printer. We can really up the game with all of these builds, especially with a build like this. Like now that I've worked out a lot of the kinks in this heater, um, I'm pretty much ready to put together what I want to feel like is the final build that'll end up going with me camping all the time. Um, so I'd love to get cracking on that. And I also have a bunch of other, you know, cool content that'll be coming out. So make sure you stay tuned. Thanks guys. Have a good one.